there. Sorry to wander off like that. I just had a couple tunes running through my head, and I, I, I meant to start the news and got, got carried away. One of my students this week, it is uh, the 18th. We're getting, oh, we're, it's almost Thanksgiving around here in, in the United States. Um, one of my students asked me this week about, about um, Peter, Paul, and Mary's tune, going way back, 63, 65, I don't know. Um, a Solon, which is a, just a really cool little melody that they that uh, they put together with contrapuntal vocals and uh, bringing in an old round, hey ho, nobody home, and um, other holiday related stuff. Anyway, made me think I should I should do a lesson on that. So uh, the original, of course, just starts with a simple melody. Then a bass part comes in, I think. Something like that. Um, okay, stop, stop, stop. Just got a few things to talk about today. I do want to um, kind of elaborate on something that came up last week when I was messing around with Death Don't Have No Mercy. And one of it is, I'm going to get to a lesson on, on I'm, going to, I'm actually planning two lessons that I hope to get to next week. I, I, I always promise this stuff. I never promise it. I hope I always say, this is what I'm hoping to get to. Um, a, a, a relatively straightforward version of the way Gary Davis played it. I think I played that last week, just sitting here with the book. And, um, but then using that chord progression to talk a little bit more about how Yorma did it um, on the, well many many times and it was always different but it always follows the same chord progression and that's kind of the the important thing I'll get to that that's that's today's tip is is understanding chord progressions and being able to play well let me divert first into what happened this week um, we ended up with a couple new packs a pack of uh, five and a and a half Aretha Franklin tunes if uh, anybody wants to mess around with things like respect and save me and say a little prayer um, and I want to thank Max for putting those together quite a while ago. I think I just mentioned in the forum post that I kind of stumbled into those and thought, hey, people have asked me, do we have any Aretha Franklin tunes? And then I looked up and we had like five. Anyway, and, um, and of course then uh, a Glenn Campbell one with some just fabulous tunes in there. Uh-oh. Anyway, that's in there. By the time I get to Phoenix, and of course Wichita Lineman, and uh, Galveston, and uh, Gentle on My Mind, and Highwayman. Okay, you've already heard, already heard me mess around with that plenty of times. I don't need to do it now, I don't think. Um, but part, partly due to the, the request that came in last week of, of how, to, how to just sit down and improvise with a chord progression, um, I hope some of you had a chance to take a look at the lesson I did on It Was a Very Good Year. Um, that was a little bit more, well, I, I put it down as a DIY, do-it-yourself lesson, where we just started with the original melody, which was in the key of E minor. And that's just not a great key for playing the melody, for making a good solo guitar version. So, uh, I kind of part of the assignment with that lesson was to First of all, transpose it yourself into A minor.
Anyway, so got to that, and I hope uh, some of you had a chance to check it out. I want to thank Nesh for putting together a lesson that I was not familiar with, too. This is great because we, I, you know, get, keep getting exposed to things that uh, were off, I think, not as popular maybe here in the United States as they were in, um, in Europe and other parts of the world. So, uh, Cliff Richard, can you believe it? Lucky Lips. Check it out. Just just went up today, so it, it, it hasn't been around very long. Um, and uh, let's see. Do I have anything else I want to talk about? Well, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna mess around with. I'll, I'll get to my tip in a little while. I I do want to remind you that a lot of my students, my live students, have started brushing up on Christmas tunes because it takes a while to get them down, and that leads me to where I gotta I gotta sort of go do a an inventory. One of them asked the other day about um, if I if we had this one. Um, I said, you know, I don't think I did a lesson on that, but I know it was on my first Christmas album back in the mid late '80s, early middle '80s, I guess. Um, so I'll put, if I don't have one, I'll put it up. Well, I was pleased to find out that we did have it. That's of course the angels we have heard on high. as like the third piece in a medley of four and it ends with I was really going with this is if there are any other holiday related tunes that you'd like me to get to an arrangement of let me know quick because we're running out of time and I'd be happy to uh, add something new to our to our Christmas and holiday tunes um, boy uh, did I do this one a few years ago okay wait I can't play any more Christmas stuff it's it's still it's still the middle of November um, but we will be running some some specials. Keep an eye on your mail. Um, hopefully, a lot of you have figured out that that I've gotten involved now in sending out kind of a, a little blast every Saturday of um, the especially with the specials that we're having. We're running you know special sales every every week on usually on packs, and uh, that will continue. So if you're if you're the sort that likes to to get a deal on uh, on our five to six to seven to eight to even ten packs, keep an eye on on your email. Those are uh, going out every Saturday morning. Um, let's see. Did I have anything else? No. Okay. Here's what I want to talk about. I think that's it for the announcements. Let me double check my list. Yeah, good enough. Um, really, really important to know the chord progression to a song. I want to pick a really easy song. Okay. This, this is the chord progression to Angel from Montgomery. G, C, G, C, G, C, D, G. Got it? And uh, to start improvising with something like that, what you really want to make sure you, can, you have is three or four or more different voicings of every chord you could play. So um, if we pick a chord like A, ooh, dangerous one, don't pick A. Take uh, C. Okay. Um, if I, if I think about a C chord, I want to be able to play it in multiple places on the neck, and my two, the first two go-to spots are know where it is as a bar chord out of the two main families. Know that it would be at the fifth, uh, third fret out of the A family, and the eighth fret out of the E family, and then I've got the bonus that it's that it can be played open, but I also have like the D family. 
and I, I would know that I would take a, a C, a little, I'm sorry, a D shape up to the 12th fret, and I've got C. Well, that means I could be playing, and check my lesson called Lead Secrets, Triads. That goes into reductions, three string reductions of these, of the, th the three main families, E, A, and D, where if I need to play a G chord, I could play my G chord here, but I could play it at the third fret out of a, a mini E shape, at the seventh fret out of a mini D shape, 10th fret out of a mini A shape. So if I'm trying to make up something over a G chord, I could go to any of those places. And even all the way up to the, what is that, the 15th fret, I guess, um, where I got back to the same thing I just played at, at the third fret. So there were three different mini versions of my G chord. Well, now I'm playing a progression and now it's going to C. I know that I can do the same thing, a little mini version of C at the third fret, out of the A family, the eighth fret out of the E family, or the twelfth fret out of the D family. So I'm playing a chord, I'm gonna stretch out the chords and stay on each chord a little bit longer, but if we we're doing Angel from if we we're doing something like Angel from Montgomery. two measures of C, I'm counting these as half notes. I'm feeling like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I got tired of the G's and the C's. I'm going to go to E minor and A minor. I'm going to start with my E minor here and A minor here, knowing I could also play the E minor as a bar at the 7th fret and the A minor at the 5th. Now I also have open bass notes, which means I don't need those bars on. Land on B7, cuz I want to end it on E minor. I don't know if that's very helpful, but just, uh, I guess the, 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 the takeaway from this is make sure you know at least three different ways of playing any chord, major or minor, what fret you'd have to bring it to out of either the E or the A family, whether you, could, whether you have to play it as a full bar, like if we're talking about B flat, got a tough, tough problem with a B flat chord because you know, we have no open notes, well, we can play a D in it, but, but we don't have any open notes we can take advantage of. So usually if I'm improvising over a chord progression, I'm going to do it in a key that lets me have some open bass notes. So that's why um, last week, messing with Death Don't Have No Mercy, I have an E minor chord to A minor and B7. Goes to D next, right? To G. B7. in there. Okay, um, never mind all that. Hopefully the, the takeaway here is be able to play an A minor chord in a couple of different places. Take a, take a 
progression like um, Tequila Sunrise. G, D, and just figure out other ways you can play the chords. A minor, D7, to G. Now I'm not going to worry about bass notes. I'm going to play my G chord in a D shape at the 7th fret. My D chord at the 7th fret. 5th really. My A minor at the 5th. Now, even though the song went to a D7 there, I could just play a D, and my little D here is the top three strings of the chord out of the A family. And back to a G, using my D shape, over here. I guess it starts on B, huh? Back to B. Then figure out the melody. Anyhow, I guess that is the point. Um, figure out ways to play every chord you know in multiple places on the neck. And in my lesson coming up on Death Don't Have No Mercy, it'll talk a little bit more about fills that happens in there too. So um, I think that's it for now. That's enough playing too, I think. And enough talking, huh? Gosh. Okay. Have a good weekend. I will see you after Thanksgiving. I hope. Everything should be fine for, for a, an update next Friday.